Good morning to all. A hearty welcome to the second day of International E Conference. I request the organizing secretary of the E Conference, Reverend Father G. Kiran Kumar, and the convener of the E Conference, Sri M. Maria Das Daru, to start the proceedings. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Good morning, Good morning Father. Good morning, sir. Shall we begin? I wait for two or three minutes. We will wait for two more minutes, Father, since people are joining. We will wait for two minutes and then we will start, Father. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, Father. We acknowledge the presence of our resource persons, Dr. Ambrose Prabhu Garu and Dr. Tirupura Sundari Madam. Hearty welcome to both of you. Hearty welcome, sir. Hearty welcome to you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Shall we start, Father? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> so, good morning to one and all. Once again, welcome back to the day two, second day of our international e conference on recent trends in mathematical sciences. I thank all those who have cooperated us today by participation, by presenting papers, and listening to the resource persons. So today, so today also, we request, request all of you to stay back till the end of this program, program. and uh, you'll, you'll be enlightened, be enlightened with, the with the invited talks, talks. and so may, may request, request all to stay back till the end of this program today. today. And, and now may I request uh, Mr. M. Maria Dasugaru to give the proceedings of today's program. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you very much, Father. Thank you, sir. I thank the Lord Almighty for keeping us all sound and safe and bring us back to the day two deliberations of the International E Conference on recent trends in mathematics organized by Department of Mathematics, Andhra Laila College. I welcome you all. And without any delay, may I now invite Sri B. Salomon Raju. 
senior manager pwc california usa to deliver his lecture hello this is raju salaman bandanadam i'm a proud alumni of andhra laila college undergraduate batch 92 to 95 I'm currently working as a senior manager in Price Waterhouse Coopers in San Francisco, California. I've done my major in mathematics in Loyola College, and then I did my master's in mathematics and computer science in my post graduation. It's a great to hear that the Andhra Loyola College has completed 67 years of excellence in higher education, and always proud of Loyola. I would like to take this opportunity and I am sure every lilac will join with me proudly to congratulate and thank all the great people's hard work. It's a great privilege and my honor to participate and share as a speaker in the International E Conference. Today I'm going to explain about the quadratic formula that is a today's topic I'd like to share. and how it serves an important role in the mathematical science perspective of the world that we live in today before we jump in i'd like to go quickly the history behind the evolution of this quadratic formula the indian mathematician brahmagupta at the time of 597668 ad explicitly described the quadratic formula in his treatise Brahma Siddhanta published in 628 AD but written in words instead of symbols the 9th century of persian mathematician muhammad ibn musa solved quadratic equations algebraically in 1637 rene descartes published a large geometry containing special cases of the quadratic formula in the form we know today what is a quadratic equation a quadratic equation is a math is a second degree equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0 here a and b are the coefficients c is the constant term and x is the variable since the variable x is of the second degree there are two roots of answer for this quadratic equation the roots of the quadratic equation can be found by either solving by factorizing or through the use of a formula what are the real life applications of the quadratic equations the quadratic equations are used to find the zeros of the parabola and its axis of symmetry there are many real world applications of quadratic equations for instance it can be used in running time problems to evaluate the speed distance and time while traveling by car train or plane the quadratic equations describe the relationship between the quantity and the price of a commodity similarly the demand and cost calculations are also considered quadratic equation problems it can also be noted that a satellite dish or a reflecting telescope has a shape that is defined by a quadratic equation how are the quadratic equations different from a linear equation So, in a linear degree, is an equation of a single degree and one variable, and a quadratic equation is an equation of two degrees and a single variable. A linear equation is of the form a x plus b equals to zero, and a quadratic equation is of the form a x squared plus b x plus c equals to zero. A linear equation has a single root. and a quadratic equation has two roots or two answers also a quadratic equation is a product of two linear equations 
I'd like to share my screen before we dig into it. How to simplify a quadratic equation? The first step in the process of simplifying a quadratic equation is to transform it into a standard form a squared plus a bx plus c equals to zero. Further, it can be simplified by finding its factors through the process of factorization. Also, for an equation for which it is difficult to factorize, it is also solved by using the formula. Additionally, there are a few other ways of simplifying the quadratic equation. And now, we ask what are the four ways to solve the quadratic equation? The four ways of solving quadratic equations are Number one, factorizing the method. Number two, formula method. Number three, method of completing squares. Number four, graphing method. In this present image, ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero is the standard formula of the problem. I'm going to explain the color coding of this red color, blue, and then pink color. Come to the red color diagram. The formula where x is equals to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c over 2 a will allow us to find the x intercepts. The c here represents the y intercept. And back to the blue color. Now let's take a look at the term negative b minus 2a. This equation corresponds to the position of a symmetry axis of the parabola. With that in mind, we can find the vertex of the parabola using the same equation for the x value. And using the equation negative b squared minus 4ac or 4a in order to find the y value of the vertex of the parabola. And coming back to the, the equation that is in pink, colored in pink, lastly, the parabola contains a set of all points in a plane which are equal distance away from the given line, which is known as the focus. It is significant through the formula negative b divided by 2a 1 minus b squared minus 4ac or 4a. The directrix of the other hand is perpendicular to the axis of symmetry of a parabola and does not touch the parabola. As can be seen, the formula would be y equals to negative 1 plus b squared minus 4ac divided by 4a. And now we can ask a question, how do you solve a quadratic equation by factoring? The quadratic equation can be solved by factorization through a sequence of three steps. First, split the middle term such that the product of the split terms is equal to the product of the first and the last terms. Let us assume the quadratic equation is the form of x squared plus a plus b times x plus a b equals to zero. And it can be split as x squared plus a x plus b x plus a b equals to zero. As a second step, take the common term from the first two and the last two terms. x times x plus a plus b times x plus a equals to zero. x plus a x plus b equals to zero. Finally, equalize each of the factors to zero and obtain the x values. x plus a equal to zero and then x plus b equal to zero. And hence, we can obtain x equal to negative a and x equal to negative b. Now we can ask a question how to solve quadratic equation by completing this square. The quadratic equation is solved by a method of completing this square and it uses the formula where we see a plus b whole square equals to k squared. 
Now the next question will arise, how to find the value of the discriminant? The value of the discriminant in a quadratic equation can be found from the variables in constant terms of a standard form of the quadratic equation. Ax squared plus bx plus c equals to z0. The value of a discriminant is d equals to b squared minus 4ac. And it helps to predict the nature of roots of the quadratic equation without actually finding the roots of the equation. How do you use the quadratic equation with the graph of it? The quadratic equation can be solved similarly to a linear equal by graph of it. Let us take the quadratic equation. A squared plus bx plus c equals to 0 as y equals to a squared plus bx plus c. Here we take the set of values of x and y and plot the graph. These two points where this graph meets the x axis are the possible solution of this quadratic equation. Now, how to find a nature roots of the quadratic equation? Let's go into it. The discriminant is helpful to predict the nature of the roots of the quadratic equation. Well, the determinant of the quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0 is b squared minus 4ac. The discriminant is referred as d equals to b squared minus 4ac. If d is greater than 0, the roots are real and distinct. For d equal to 0, the roots are equal. And for d is less than 0, the roots are imaginary complex numbers. Now, if you think about how important is a discriminant in determining the nature of roots of quadratic equation, the discriminant is very much needed to easily find the nature of roots of the quadratic equation. Without the discriminant, finding the nature of the roots of the equation is a long process. As we first need to solve the equation to find both the roots, hence the discriminant is as important in the needed quantity, which helps to easily find out the nature of the quadratic equation. Now our next question would be, how is the quadratic formula used to solve a quadratic equation? The algebra of formula a plus b whole square equal to a square plus b b plus b square is used to solve the quadratic equation and derive the quadratic formula. This algebra formula is used to manipulate the quadratic equation and derive the quadratic formula to find the roots of the equation. Now, we would like to go through multiple, multiple realistic, realistic examples. examples. I'm, I'm going to share my ideas of three examples, the realistic examples, and we can deeply get into it. How is quadratic formula useful to resolve these problems? If you look at the example one, we're going to find out the maximum height 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 a ball, a ball is shot from a cannon, cannon into the air, air with an upward velocity of 40 feet per second. second. The, the equation that gives, gives the height of the ball at any time, time is, is h times, times t equals, equals to negative, negative 16 t squared plus 4 t and t plus 1.55. And now we're going to find out the maximum height attained by the ball. ball. Let's, Let's first, first take, take a minute to understand the problem and what it means. We know that the ball is being shot from the cannon, so imagine the cannon is firing a ball. We know that the ball is going to shoot from the cannon, going to the air, and then fall out of the ground. So if you see in the picture, now let's talk about what each of these problems means. In our equation that we are given must be the value for the force, force of gravity, gravity which is coefficient of t square, square. We, we must also, also use our upward velocity, velocity which is coefficient, coefficient of t. t. And our original height of the cannon, or ball. 
So if you see H times T equals to a negative 16 T squared plus 40 T plus 1.5. H times T is the height of the building. 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 One point five represents the height of the project line, project line at the time of the launch. launch. The ball the is shot, shot from, from the cannon, cannon, which is one point five feet off the ground. ground. Now, now, but you have a picture. What's, what's happening? happening? And then we can, can understand, understand the formula, formula given. given. We can we go ahead and solve the problem. Let's see how we can solve the problem. First, first. We are asked to find out the maximum height. If you look into the diagram, what part of the parabola is this? Yes, yes. It is the vertex. We will need to use the vertex formula, and then then we will need to know the y coordinate of the vertex because it's asked us the height. Height. What is the next step? Now that we know that that we need to use the vertex formula, I can get it get work. In order, In order to find, to find the maximum, maximum height, height of the ball, ball, I will need to find the y coordinate. The, the, the vertex formula is x equals to negative b divided by 2a, which is h times t equals, equals to, as we know, as we as we know negative 16 times t squared plus 40t plus 1.5. Where? Where? A equals to negative 16, b equals to 40, c equals to 1.5. Now, now x, x equal to negative 40, 40 divided, divided by, by 2 times negative 16, where x equal to now x equal to 1.25 or, or t equal to 1.25. T represents the time, time and, and the x coordinate in this formula. Now, now substitute 1.25 for into the function and solve for, for h times t. t. Now, h now times t, t equals to negative 16 times 1.5 squared square plus, plus 40, 40 times, times 1.5 plus 1.5. That gives h times t equal to 26.5 feet. Now, the maximum height of the ball is 26.5 feet, which occurred at 1.25 seconds. The problem is solved. We don't, we don't need, need to, to stop, stop here. here. We can we take this simple, simple problem and, and we can put a twist on that. that. There are there many are other things, things that we can find out about, about this. this. All, all. We can go we to go the example number two. two. And here, here if we go, go to, to the example two, 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 we can we also can find out how long did it take the ball to reach the ground. Maybe it's, it's the same, same problem, problem, but a different question. We can take a look into this. As, As we, we know, the ball is shot from cannon into the air, an upward velocity 40 feet per second. The, the equation gives, gives the height, height of the ball, ball and time is h times t, 16, 16, 16, 16 negative 16, 16 square square 40 feet, plus, feet, plus, plus 1.55. 1. 5. Now we can we calculate, calculate how long it is taking for the ball to reach the ground. Now, as we change the question, we want to know how long did it take the ball to reach the ground. You can ask what ground. The problem didn't mention anything about the ground. Let's take a look at the picture in our mind again. Do you see where the ball must fall to the ground? The x axis is our ground. In this problem, what do we know about the points x axis when we are dealing with quadratic equations and parabola? Yes. yes. The, the points, points on the x-axis are our zeros or x-intercepts. This, this means that, that we must solve, solve the quadratic equation, equation in order to find the, the x-intercepts. Let's, Let's do, it. do it. Let's solve the equation. equation. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that, that this may, may not be a factor in the equation. I hope, I hope you agree. agree. Then what then is what our solution? solution? Hopefully, Hopefully you agree that we can, that we can, can use, use the quadratic, quadratic formula. formula. To solve, to solve this equation. Now let's get, let's get into it. 
h h times t equals to, as we know, 60 negative 60 times t squared plus 40 t plus 1.5. Where A equals to negative 16, B equals to 40, C equals to 1 and 5. As we know the formula, x equals to negative B plus or minus square root of B square minus 4 AC by 2 A. No, x equals to if we apply the variables negative 40 plus or minus square root of 40 square root minus 4. Minus, minus 16, 16 times, times 1.5 divided, divided by 2 times, times negative 16, where we get the x equals to negative 40 plus or minus square, square root of 1696 divided, divided by negative 32, 32, where we see x equal to negative 40 plus 1696 square root divided, divided by 32, 32 or, or x equal to negative 40. 40, 40 minus square root of 1696 by negative 3032. Now where we get x equal to 0 0.037, x equal to 2.554. So the ball landed on the ground in 2.454. The first term doesn't make sense because it's a negative. This is the calculation for when the ball was on the ground initially before it was shot. This actually never really occurred because the ball was shot from the cannon and was never shot from the ground. Therefore, we will disregard this negative answer. The other answer was 2.54 seconds, which is the ball reached the ground. X axis after it was shot. Therefore, this is the only correct answer to this problem. After Finishing these two problems, one more problem is spinning up. What would you do in this case? Let's go into problem number three. And in this problem, based on about two problems, we're going to see how long does it take the ball to reach the height of 20 feet. The ball the is shot from the cannon, cannon again, as we, as know, we know, into the air at the upward velocity, velocity 40 feet per second. Per second. The, the equation that gives the height, height h, h of the ball at any time t, h times t equals to negative 16 t squared plus 40 t plus 1.5, as we've been seeing in other two examples. Yes, the problem is a little tricky because the question is not asking for the maximum height or the time taken. It is, it is asking, asking for the time it takes to reach a height, a height of 20, 20 feet. I'm repeating. For, for the time, time it takes to reach the feet of the 20 feet. feet. Now, now since the ball, the ball reaches the maximum, the maximum height of 26.5 feet, we know that, that it will reach a height of 20 feet on the way up and then, then the way down. down. Let's just, Let's just estimate, estimate on our graph. graph. And also make sure we get this visual in our head. If you look into, into, into this graph, I would estimate the times to be about 0 0.7 seconds and 1.9 seconds. You see how the ball will reach 20 feet on the way up and on the way down. Now let's find out the actual values where we will be substitute 20 feet. Yes, yes. We, we must, must substitute, substitute 20, 20 feet, feet for height, height times t because, because this is a given height. height. We, will we will now be solving, solving for t using, using the quadratic term. term. Let's take it again. H times t, as we know, now, the formula is h, h times t equals t. Negative 16 t squared plus 40 t plus 1.5. Substitute 20 for h times t, since, since this is the height, height we are solving for. for. So, so if, if we apply the value, value here, 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 20, 20 equals to, to negative 16 times t squared plus, plus 40, 40 times t plus 1.5. In order to solve a quadratic equation, the equation must be set up, equal to 0. Therefore, we need, we need to subtract 20, 20 from, from both sides. sides. 20, 20 minus 20, 20 equals, equals to 
if negative 16 times t squared plus 40 times t plus 1.5 minus 120. We get zero on the left hand side equals to negative 16 times t squared plus 40 t minus 80.8825. This is a new equation. Now, now. A equals to negative 16 and B equals to 40, C equals to negative 18.5. We know the formula x equal to a negative B plus or minus square root of B square minus 4AC by 2A. So x equal to negative 40 plus or minus square root of 40 square minus 4 times minus 16 minus 18.5 divided, divided by, by 2 times negative 16. Now, when we simplify this, x, x equals, equals to negative 40, 40 plus or minus, minus square root of 49 and 16 divided, divided by negative 8. And now, if we further simplify x equal to negative 40 plus 416 square root divided by minus 32, or x equal to negative 40, Minus, minus square root, root of 416 divided by negative, negative 32. 32. Now we now get we x equal to 0. 0.61 and x, x equal to 1.88. 1. 1. The ball reached a height of 20 feet at 0. 0.61 seconds and 1.88 seconds. Our actual times were pretty close to our estimates. You just don't forget that when you solve all, when we solve quadratic equations. You must, must have equations set equal to zero. zero. Therefore, we, we have to subtract 20, 20 from both, both sides in order to have the equation set to zero. zero. Now we, we have, have seen, seen all multiple different circumstances, circumstances three, three different, different examples, examples we have seen. seen. And then, like, like this, this, there are so many examples, examples that we can, can find out in this world. world. To solve, to solve the problems, problems. and many, many people, people use, use, use this quadratic equation. equation. <clears throat> I would, I would like, like to thank, thank I hope you enjoyed enjoy my presentation and ideas. ideas. And I would like, I would like to thank, thank each, each and every one of the great, great people, people that, that got an opportunity, that gave uh, the opportunity for me. And I, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. day. Please be safe. safe. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Sri B. Salman Rajgaru for uh, introducing the quadratic equations in a different perspective to find the time taken to reach the ground by the ball thrown into the air and also how you have linked the trajectory to the quadratic equations. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, Sri B. Salman Rajar. Now I invite uh, the next uh, resource person, Sri B. Sri Dr. R. Ambrose Prabhu Garu. So, but before that, I will introduce him to you. I have the pleasure in introducing Dr. R. Ambrose Prabhu, Associate Professor. DMI College of Engineering, Chennai. He completed BSc Mathematics and also MSc Mathematics from University of Madras, Chennai and passed in first class with the distinction. He obtained his MPhil in Mathematics from Algapa University, Karaikudi, Tamil Nadu and obtained his PhD in Mathematics from Anna University, Chennai. He has published 22 research papers in the reputed national and international journals and five of more are in offing. And he has published his research work in ample number of conference proceedings. He has participated in more than 20 workshops organized by different reputed institutions. He acted as a resource person for a good number of seminars organized by different institutions. And he himself has organized 
ten conferences. He had more than twenty years of teaching experience. He is a systematic, sincere, and committed person. He worked as examination cell coordinator for conducting the Anna University examinations for four years. He also acted as head of the department and coordinator for some programs in their universities. Now I am very happy to invite Dr. R. Ambrose Prabhu to deliver his lecture on the applications of mathematics and statistics in our daily life. So now I invite uh, Dr. R. Ambrose Prabhu. Uh, thank you, Mr. Maria Das, sir, for your nice uh, and brief introduction about me. I hope you are all able to hear my voice and also my video. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are uh, audible. Yeah, let me present. Yeah, can you see the screen, sir? Yes, sir. It is visible. Yeah, thank you. So, first of all, before going to the lecture, first of all, I would like to thank the principal, Andhra Laila College, Vijayawada, HOD and Director, ALC, IC, ICR, EMS, convener and organizer of this international e-conference. So, my name is Dr. R. Ambrose Prabhu, Associate Professor, Science and Humanities, DMA College of Engineering, Chennai. So my topic is application of mathematics and statistics in our daily life. So yesterday also, uh, I think in the second uh, lecture, Mr. Francis Shauri Kumar, Engineering Manager, Texas, USA, he was giving a lecture on statistics also. Most probably, the, my view on this view may be the same. But the side may be a different one. Anyhow, let us see this. So, I have uh, divided my lecture into five parts. So the first division, or uh, the stage one, is introduction to statistics. Stage two, descriptive versus inferential statistics. What is the difference between the descriptive and the inferential statistics? The stage three, understanding variable types. Stage four, applications of statistics. And finally, in stage five, applications of mathematics, which we are using in our daily life without knowing that. Okay, so I hope it may be interesting for you. So before moving on to the session, can you identify this personality? Can you identify this personality, anyone? Okay, I'll give you one more picture. Now I hope you can identify this personality. Anyone else? Okay, let me give you some clue. He was an Indian industrialist, an aviator, who was born to a French mother and grew up in France. A meeting pioneer Louis Leroy sparked his aviation interest. It was one of India's great conglomerates with business as diverse as steel, power, and hotels. By 1929, he had given up his French citizenship and became licensed as one of India's first commercial pilots. Over the next years, he established Tata Airmail. By this time, he must have identify who the personality is, which became the Tata Airlines and then Air India. Anyone else? Okay, I will reveal this. He is J.R.D. Tata. Why I have chosen this personality to this particular date? Can anyone answer my question? Okay. So he born today. So 29th Ju July is birthday. So that is why purposefully I have chosen his name. Okay. Now let's go to the statistics. So what is statistics? Statistics is nothing but the science of collection 
organizing presenting analyzing and interpreting the data to help in making more effective decisions for example suppose you are running a business in online selling company company or you you must be the owner okay you want to send a campaign to the customers you send the campaign to others and you don't want to send the campaigns to the other people set of people and if you want to know whether the customers are going to buy based on campaign or not whether the company is effective or not how do you design the experiment whether to send or whom not to send how do you figure out how many of them to send and once it has happened and suppose the customers who got the advertisement clicked on it and purchased a little more and who has not received that advertisement may not click on it they may not be able to buy so to answer all these questions we do statistics statistics analysis is implemented to manipulate summarize and investigate the collected data so that it is useful for our decision making information results are obtained so what are the types of statistics we have descriptive statistics what is descriptive statistics and what is inferential statistics it is the method of organizing summarizing and presenting the data in an informative way i'll give you an example for a descriptive statistics for example we have all the data say how your business is going on how much inventory you keep how many customers reaches you for your business or whatever may be the case in which month your business attain its peak which product sells more at what point of time what kind of customers reaches your shop or reduce frequently is it a male customer visits your shop frequently or a female customer or it may be a children or maybe the grocery buyers visit quite often all these data are answered by descriptive statistics then what is inferential statistics it is a method which is used in determining something about a population on the basis of a sample for example let me tell you what is inference of statistics with an example recently we had an election in our country in few states am i right or not so of course in tamil nadu also we had an election so eligible person that means those who attain 18 years of age have to go on vote for the party a or b or c or d whatever may be the case how do you figure out whether this particular person is going to vote for party a or party b or other parties but you want to figure it out so you need to select a sample you decide the sample size and based on the sample size you try to infer which party is going to get more number of votes right so for this we need inferential statistics you have to infer that whether the person is saying that the truth while mocking in a uh, poll is taking place that becomes inferential statistics so the population is all the individuals of the state say in particular tamil nadu or in andhra people voted and sample would be those people whom you went and asked party b or party c or party d this is nothing but the definition or the example of the inferential statistics the next thing is we are going to discuss about descriptive statistics and inferential statistics what comes here in descriptive statistics we have central tendency data distribution skewness correlation and of course in central descriptive statistics in central uh, particularly in central tendency we have mean median mode all these things that we'll be having i mean am i right or so what is mean nothing but the average what is median median is a statistical measure that determines the middle value of a data set listed either in ascending order or in descending order what about the mode the mode is nothing but the value which is repeatedly occurring in a given set to find the skewness or the formula some textbook they use the formula skewness is equal to mean minus mode 
product 3 hold divided by standard deviation skewness is nothing but the measure of the symmetry of a distribution okay then in inferential statistics of course you know what about the meaning of a correlation all these things correlation value should lies between minus 1 and plus 1 and that is division distribution so we have to distribute the data and all these things can be figured out by using the either histogram or pie chart or bar graph or any other suitable diagrams okay so what about inferential statistics so inferential statistics comes under hypothesis testing confidence interval and regression analysis see regression analysis you can predict by using regression analysis you can predict the future isn't it suppose you have in 1970 1980 1990 you have the rainfall so in 2000, what would be the rainfall? So therefore, we can predict. Similarly, numerical methods also we have Lagrangian uh, method. So using this Lagrangian method, we can predict. The same thing can be used by using the statistic, statistical tool called re regression analysis. Next one is variability. See, around the world, we have a lot of variability. I have chosen a particular variability in order to satisfy our statistical tool. What are they? See, I. We were dealing with height, isn't it? Some important problems are there. Suppose two sailors are there, then a normal person are, are there. They, they'll be giving you the average of the sailors or the soldiers. And we have to check whether a sailor are taller than the soldier or soldier is taller than the sailor. So to identify this, we have a collected data. By using the collected data, we can use a particular tool, either the t-test or the, uh, what is that, student t-test or normal distribution large sample accordingly we can check whether it is possible or not isn't it so we can decide who is taller than the other the next one is say weight similarly for like height we can go for weight also we can check the weight also similarly hair color and then finally food preferences all these things are there just i have chosen many variables are there but i have chosen a few next one is we have variables what are we going to study categorized variables are there countable variables are there measurable variables so we will see one by one first i'll go with measurable variables so in measurable variables we have two data what are they quantitative data and categorical data in quantitative data what are what do you mean by quantitative data measured in numbers that means it makes sense with arithmetic calculations so quantitative variables comes under height, weight, and midterm score, right? And whereas in categorical data, it refers to the values that place things into different categories. So we'll see that. What do we mean by that? Categorical variables comes under categorical data. The examples are hair color, letter grade, cat types. Those are all comes under the categorical variables so what is categorical variable so in categorical variable we have two cases one is categorical and ordinal and the next one is categorical and nominal categorical and nominal see what do you mean by categorical and ordinal logical ordering to the values of the categorical variable for example, I can take a letter grade. That is, see here I have given F, C, C plus B, B plus A, A plus. I have arranged the grade of a particular student in ascending order. If you get less than 50, it means F grade. 50 to 60, C grade. 60 to uh, 61 to 70, C plus. 71 to 80, B grade. 81 to 90, B plus. 91 to 95, A. And 96 to 100, A. Plus, right? In some uh, colleges or some schools, uh, they'll be having even uh, O grade, all these things. Okay. So I have chosen accordingly in the ascending order. Whereas categorical nominal is nothing but there is no logical sequence, no logical ordering. For example, I can take the hair color. In the hair color, some people have blonde, blonde. Okay. That is no hair at all and some people having blue hair color artificially they may be using some brown color red color if i arrange okay blonde to the last blue to the first if i arrange any order it makes no sense that means there is no logical that is the meaning of 
categorical and nominal okay then the next one is quantitative variable what do you mean by a quantitative variable in quantitative variable already we have seen the definition we have two cases one is discrete okay what do you mean by discrete one refer to variables that can only be measured in certain numbers clear yeah? the example numbers of pet you own numbers of pet you own how many cats do you have at home or how many dogs do you have at home you may have zero you may have two pets you may have three pets you may have four pets but you cannot have 4.2 pets am i right or not so that is called a discrete one then what about continuous one continuous refers to variables that can take on any numerical value so i can take the weight of a particular person the weight of a particular person can be 65 it can be 75 it can be 86.25 also right see this quantitative variable plays a vital role in our day to day life applications to the discrete and continuous see those days okay, we were using phone just a dial the phone when we were dialing a phone so one who receives the call will not be able to know who the person is calling am i right or not after introducing themselves then only they will come to know so and so is calling so therefore that means we were using only the continuous case continuous functions whereas nowadays we were using both the discrete as well as the continuous that is why the discrete gives you the number so it will be a form of a string when i uh, dial a number to my friend mr uh, uh, das maria das so he can view my number or he he can view my name if my name has been stored in his mobile phone how is it possible only because of the discrete case so when i am calling so it will be in the form of a wave then it can be converted to a string and that that string can be converted to a binary form that is nothing but the numbers or the name all this hap happens within a nanosecond everything happens within a nanosecond all this happens because of a discrete and also the continuous continuous function okay it fasters faster you the process whereas discrete gives you the number so this is the ultimate aim of a discrete and the continuous functions remember all the application that we are using there will be an equation behind that application okay so mathematics plays a vital role everywhere that is what we are going to see in a few slides from now that means statistics everywhere and also mathematics everywhere statistics in everything statistics in everything so you know as i told you earlier statistics means collecting analyzing organizing and interpreting so we have to collect a sample we have a population we have to collect a sample and we have to analyze and then we have to organize and then we have to come to the conclusion whether they said is correct or not for example the tv company owner he says that my tv will last long for more than 10 years okay we cannot accept his statement as such we have to examine his statement how do you examine there is a tool called statistics tool many tools are there in statistics isn't it we have large uh, test i mean large sample test small sample test chai then chai square distribution many thing many tools are there anova distribution many tools are there we can use any one of this appropriately then we can come to the conclusion his statement is correct or not of course i am going to use a slide a few slides just as an example Okay, I mean the mathematical tool. So now, mathematical equations comes into play, right? So how statistics plays a vital role in our daily life? Whenever we deal with numbers, okay, numbers or equations, mathematical equations comes into play. So now, let us talk about the numbers and calculations. Mathematical equations comes into play, and then they bring the statistics along with so let's get right into it now see how statistics plays a vital role in our daily life say for example today is so hot okay 
see in the picture today is the day i melt away maybe because of so hot during su summer season we feel very hot isn't it so it may be raining the temperature is it is it going to rain it may be 25 degrees celsius or it may be 35 degrees celsius tomorrow right we cannot predict but we can predict it depends upon the situation and of course the statistical tool there may be a crash in stock market also and may many suffer the huge loss need to make our investment properly there we are going to use the statistics is it limited to the temperature or stock market or the money or in the sports even in sports even in cricket they are using the statistics everywhere they are using the statistics no statistics plays a vital role in all the departments we are going to see one by one okay in the few slides from now so when we talk about numbers as i told you earlier and calculations mathematical equations comes into play let's see about the statistics and also mathematics probability dispersion basic averages yes what percentage of marks that you have obtained okay what would be the average score is all mathematics but the way you are involved in gathering the data and analyzing it before jumping into the results is called the application of statistics right so even in stock market stock market we get, we are using the statistics that is for example an investor can use statistics to perform research and analysis of the stock market and determine how to improve the performance and investment portfolio for example an investor could perform hypothesis testing of a mutual funds claim that it can consistently deliver and some 9% on annual return or some x% percent annual return so even in stock market we are using the statistics what about in business planning of course in business planning also we are using statistics for example you can study the investment types with the help of data that we have collected also how to earn extra pocket money is also a statistics we have been talking about statistics without even realizing in our daily life then what about in healthcare of course in healthcare we are using isn't it in healthcare by taking complete details of the population with respect to the demographic and various other factors also the medical history such as blood pressure temperature and the overall physical health is also statistics nowadays we are having the covaxin or covishield so we are having the statistics how many of them have cured every statistics are available based on the statistics we are applying the covaxin or covishield so how effective it is all these things we are having the statistics so they are realizing so this covishield and covaxin is more effective not to prevent the pandemic diseases right such as covid-19 right what about in finance statistics in finance yes your pocket money expenditure saving associated with your financial health can also be managed by statistics given the government even the government rely on statistical data to make huge policies that affects the trade of millions of us even i can think about the statistics can be applied effectively in the banking sector and also in the genetics see in banking sector it can be used and also in the genetics we can apply the statistics so remember statistics plays a vital role in our daily life and in every moment so numbers are generated everywhere statistics extract the information now i'll uh, just give you slides on analytical representation calculate a per t test by hands for the following data so we have the data 10 11 subjects are there and the particular student score okay is given 3 3 3 etc and also in score 2 so for example you can take internal assessment 1 and internal assessment 2 so subject okay it is given and score is given score 2 is given so i am going to use the formula so this is the formula so t is equal to so we have yes i am using the t test because it's a what small sample which is less than 30 so i am preferring t test this is the formula summation d by n divided by square root of summation d square by 
I mean, minus summation the whole square by n divided by n minus one into n. So of course you know all these things. So I am skipping this and using those values, I am getting the value t equal to minus two point seven four and the table value. How to find table value? To find the table value, I want to go for the degree of freedom. So n is equal to eleven. So n minus one is equal to ten. So the table value is two point two two eight. Here the table value is two point two two eight and the calculated value is two point seven four. I have to take only the absolute value of t. That means I have to neglect negative value. So 2.74 is the calculated value and 2.228 is the table value. So as you all know, calculated value is less than the table value. So I have to reject H naught. Yeah, and you know what would be the case, right? Now before moving on to the next, that is the mathematics. So so far we have we have been dealing with statistics. Now. Let us see some applications of mathematical equation which we are using in our daily life without realizing. So, can you tell me who the personality is? Okay, one more. I'll give you the clue also. So, he was a statistician and geneticist who is credited for setting the course of modern statistics. Many of the important concepts in statistics are his contribution, partic particularly maximum likelihood. It is. His contribution. I think he is R. A. Fisher. Uh, okay, yeah. correct, exactly, <laughs> correct. Ronald Fisher. Why I have chosen? Can you tell me? Because he is he died today, so died 29th July 1960. So 62. Anyhow, thanks for your answer. Now application of mathematics. So I am going to. Say a few applications in particular complex numbers. So, and complex analysis shows up everywhere in mathematics and and physics. Algebraically, complex numbers are close. This is a good algebraic property for a field. They have been studied in mathematics since the 17th century because of their applications to mathematics, mechanics, waves, etc. In even in signal processing. Complex analysis and Fourier analysis. For example, say I have given Fourier analysis. Even in Fourier transform, we were using in our daily life. Every day we are using while we are going in car. We are using that particular Fourier transform application. Can anyone say what application is that or what equation is that? You know, frequency modulation property. F of f of x cos a x equal to one by t. F of s plus a plus f of s minus a. So you know what is frequency model? What is the short form of frequency modulation? FM. So when we were going by car, we used to hear songs by using FM radio, right? FM is nothing but frequency modulation. We are you hearing the songs just because of that particular equation of Fourier transform that is frequency modulation property. So whenever we hear songs or in, uh, through FM radio, we should thank that particular uh, frequency modulation property, right? So and also in signals. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. So basically, if you search for application of signal processing, those are the application that are indirectly the application of complex analysis. Right. Even in two-dimensional problems involving Laplace equation, for example, heat flow, fluid flow, electrostatics are often solved using complex analysis. In particular, conformal mapping. You know what is the meaning of a conformal conformal mapping? We can transform one. Okay, plane to another plane under certain transformation. If it preserves both magnitude and direction, then it is said to be as a conformal mapping, right? So in com complex analysis, we are, I am going to uh, yeah, stick on to a transformation or a mapping. Okay, so it is used to launch a satellite also. Okay, we have Z plane, but in space we have a W plane as well. So to study various factors, we use transformation. Okay, we have a building, right? So Suppose you are shifting the house from one place, you are going to shift to the other place. Nowadays, we are shifting the building itself. Of course, you know that. So I am going to shift the building from one place to another place. So it preserves the conformal mapping. So I am not going to change the magnitude and the direction. It's such as it is. From one place, I have shifted to another place. Now we are going to use the translation called W equal to Z plus C. This transformation name is called translation. Of course, we were using, we were teaching also, isn't it? 
So all the mathematicians should be should be knowing this translation W equal to Z plus C. So we are shifting from one place to another place. Just shift it. Okay. But the magnitude is the same. The size is the same. The direction might be the same. So it is called as a translation. So to transform from one place to another place, the equation that we are using is W equal to Z plus C. You know what is W? U plus I D. Z is nothing but X plus I Y. And C is nothing but the complex constant. The next one. See, we used to see the stars. We used to see this moon, sun, etc., etc. So that means we want to enlarge. So recently, I saw in YouTube they were using a particular camera and they were enlarging the moon, okay, as a huge moon, as if they are seeing just a few meters away. So in such a way, they are zooming by using that particular camera. And of course, you can use the telescope and you can zoom it. You can magnify that. And you can view that. So we can view the we can view the stars, sun, moon, whatever maybe. So what's the tra transformation that we are using, or the equation that we are using? W equal to C is it? That C, that C matters here. The complex constant. See that C can be three plus two y, five plus two y, five minus two y. Depends upon this complex constant, it can magnify or it can distinct. Okay, in telescope or in microscope, we can view. The small, tiny viruses we can view, we can enlarge. Similarly, if you use the lens, the lens we were playing when we were the kid, we were used to play the lens. Okay, so when we just change the position, we can see the particles. It can be magnified or it can be shrink, isn't it? So W equal to C Z. That is the equation which plays a vital role to magnify or the shrink the particles behind us or before us. That is called the transformation is called. Magnification. Magnification means it means it can be enlarged, it can be shrinked also. Then what about this? One I. Okay. Then we have a PowerPoint presentation projector. So I am going to see a film or a lecture by using the projector. I am going to use the PowerPoint presentation. So what's the transformation? What's the equation that we are using? In order to get the image, it is nothing but W equal to one by Z. It is called as inversion and rotation. It is called as inversion and rotation. See, uh, you must have noticed if you see a cinema projector or the our uh, PowerPoint projector, if you see that lens directly, you can see the image inverse image. Okay, up, not direct image, inverse image. Am I right or not? We don't see. Hello. Yeah. So inverse image, isn't it? So it when you see in the 70 mm screen or directly, we are seeing the direct image. So it rotates and it gives you the direct image. So that is called inversion and rotation. So even in uh, suppose I want to see the mirror, left will be right, right will be left, isn't it? So that is called inversion and rotation. So this is the equation. That we are using in our PowerPoint presentation or in the screen also. Now, see, uh, you can see the aeroplane. Okay, so those days we had Concorde air aircraft that ran between uh, France and USA. I think so, right? So it was the fastest to flight those days, and they were uh, the engineers were trying to. Build this wings by using an equation called W equal to Z plus one by one. So this is the equation used to construct a wing. Okay. So engineers said that this is the equation that we were using. Okay, but as a mathematicians, we know how to invent an equation, but we do not know how to okay interpret or how to use those equations in our daily life. So when we have joined hands with the engineers, I think we can do wonders. So let us do research together. So when I was doing my research, okay, and this is my ultimate equation. So, the, so in the open unit disk, we can. So this is an analytic function. So if it is an analytic function, we can represent the form of a Taylor series. So the Taylor series expansion in the open unit disk is f of z is equal to z plus summation n equal to two to infinity a n z power n. If I expand this, same f of z equal to z plus a to z square plus a three z cube etc. Okay. 
So z plus a to z square. So a two. The coefficient of z square is a two. Just observe carefully. The coefficient of z square is a two. Z cube is a three, and z power four is a four. In general, z power n is a n. Okay. Same. Um, so usually the in this field. Okay, the researchers used to play with these coefficients a two, a three, a four. Usually, the a two value should be less than or equal to two. A three value should be less than or equal to three. In general, a n value should be less than or equal to one. If you say that a two is equal to two, a three equal to three, then the equation or the function should be short. Okay, so those who are done research in complex analysis, that is particularly in geometric function theory, he must be knowing that. So my future research is I'm thinking about that. See, I'm going to relate this. A two, A three, A four, etc. To a particular wave, sinusoidal wave. It may be a, a sine wave or cos wave or different waves are there. Because see, uh, nowadays researchers, researchers or the engineers or the scientists, they are able to locate the natural resources which lies underneath the ground. For example, say water, coal, diamond, gold, etc., etc. Even in water, we have different varieties. pH 1 pH 2 etc salt water etc whether that particular water is available in that ground how do we know only we dig we will come to know okay in those ancient days they were they were having different picks but now okay we have different ideas with different tools even then some times it may be a failure so they are locating the underneath resources just by using the waves so for each and everything we have a different way for example suppose i take a mobile number for my mobile number i have a different unique way for your mobile number you have a different unique way so million <coughs> people are using a different number so it is different even other car it is different we have unique way right so everyone is having a unique way for their particular mobile number likewise for every natural resources we have a unique way i am trying to locate our Uh, correlate this coefficients and also with the waves so if i correlate suppose i get a2 value is this and this can be correlated with gold or a3 value is this that value can be correlated with the particular natural resources along with the sinusoidal wave for that i need an algorithm called livingston algorithm so if anybody is interested you can join hands with me and we can do research and it will be a wonder for us easily we can identify without no cost we can identify yeah natural resources which are available underneath the ground similarly we can extend for other cases also okay and of course one more thing i want to tell you but it is not there in the slide i forgot to include in that slide cauchy residue theorem we must have used everywhere in cauchy residue theorem we were teaching this cauchy residue theorem we are using this cauchy residue theorem in our daily life where suppose i keep mom okay i am not uh, deliver delivering a lecture what are the sounds that you can hear can you tell me sorry what are the sounds that you can hear can you tell me i can i can hear my fan sound outside somebody is selling those sounds but when i am talking you can listen only my sound am i right or not you can listen only my sound no other sound or only my voice no other voice how is it possible in our eardrum we have okay that eardrum filters or residue is nothing but called filters okay the faucet so it filters all other sounds and it gives you only the sound that we require similarly even in our kitchen we are using that residue theorem where coffee we can filter the residue similarly we are using in our daily life in tv or in mobile phone suppose in tv for example you see how many channels are there nowadays we have thousand channels suppose i want sport channels i just press the number it filters all other channels and it gives you the channel that you require all this because of the cauchy residue theorem so wherever we go mathematics follows mathematical equation follows okay so i think with this i will stop thank you for your patience listen
thank you very much uh, professor dr r amros prabhu thank for you. your meaningful lecture uh, you, he did uh, his phd in complex analysis yes sir. yes but uh, he is not a complicated person he is neither a complex person he is easily approachable and very admiring so we are very fortunate to have you as our resource person uh, thank you very much dr r ambros prabhu thank so, you so we will continue for the next session next lecture yeah. so thank you thank you bospa hita no now i invite uh, the third speaker of the today's uh, conference dr p r tripura sundari dr p r tripura sundari madam good morning sir good morning i am here uh, good morning madam you can on your uh, uh, sir okay. so i would like to introduce madam to you all Dr. P. R. Tripura Sundari is working as an associate professor, Department of Mathematics, DMI College of Engineering, Chennai. She obtained her B.Sc. degree from S. D. N. B. Vaishnav College for Women, M.Sc. from I. I. T. Madras, M.Phil. from Madras. Correspondent Principal, Organizing. Uh, secretary head of the department convener and all the other co conveners and committee members for organizing this knowledge sharing session uh, as well as it is not only the knowledge sharing as well as knowledge gaining for the research scholars during this pandemic i am also delighted to be here to deliver my lecture uh, the topic of today's talk is inventory optimization in reverse supply chain with remanufacturing uh is it audible and are you able to see the screen sir yes ma'am yes sir. it is very clear okay uh, the talk is being organized in this order optimization concepts then comes supply chain management uh, the concepts of inventory optimization we can have an overlook and reverse supply chain and finally comes the model related to reverse supply chain operations research came into existence during world war 2 for the uh, resources optimal uses of the available resources whenever we hear the word operations research the first thing comes into our mind is the optimization optimization is to obtain the best among the available mathematically it is defined as a mathematical technique in order to find the maximum or minimum value of the function subject to some constraints or in some cases we may not have the constraints let us have an overview of the history of optimization optimization came into existence during 300 bc itself where euclid has found that the square has the greatest area other than the rectangle if both are having the same perimeters there itself came into optimization came into existence uh, it is being further developed in 18th 17th and 18th century mathematicians has contributed a lot in the area of optimization kepler has found the optimal dimensions of wine barrel by approximating the wine barrel with the cylinder uh, fermat has shown that the light always travel within a minimum time between two points isaac newton has uh, framed the minimal distance body of minimal distance problem and uh, lagrangian has formulated the plato's problem uh, legendar has presented the least square method cauchy has presented the gradient method bayes has presented the using the calculation of variation approach he has found the maximum or minimum value of the function in 20th century it has developed a lot and uh, Kandrovich the Soviet mathematician has presented the LP model and an algorithm to solve it also for this he has received the Nobel memorial prize of economics and uh, Harry Zanuck uh, has contributed and he has first written the textbook on optimization titled theory of maxima and minima in the year 1970 
the Denmark mathematician Vladimir Jensen has contributed uh, in the field of convex functions in 1905. Uh, in 20th century, these two mathematicians, they are not mathematicians, we can say they are all-rounders because not only they have refined the field in mathematics, he has developed in the field of mathematics everywhere, statistics, management, sciences, everywhere their contribution is there. The one Newman uh, is an important person for the development of operations research and Danzig is, has presented the simplex method for solving the linear programming problem. Let us come into the mathematical part of optimization. If a problem, a real practical problem is posed to us, we have to formulate that into a mathematical problem, finding the variables, equations, etc. Then the mathematical algorithm to be framed to solve that. This mathematical algorithm can be converted to computer algorithm, which is being fed into the decision support software system. And the human decision maker using that software system will come to the optimal solution or near optimal solution to the practical problem. Usually the problem, the sequence of uh, solving the problem using mathematical technique is done like this. Uh, we will be using optimization everywhere. It exists, uh, we can say it is omnipresent. It exists in architecture, nutrition, circuits, productions, networks, policy modeling everywhere. In all the fields, we can find the optimization techniques. The optimization problems can be classified into discrete and continuous problem, which is being further branched into constrained, unconstrained, and uh, it can be classified as linear programming, nonlinear constrained problems, differential optimization problem, global optimization problem, nonlinear least square methods. Uh, it is still now it is being further branched the optimization problems can be classified based on the types of constraints and equations it is based on the types of constraints uh, nature of the, uh, the uh, constraints equations and objective functions equations these are the few classifications Classical optimization problem can be solved using two methods. One is known as analytical method and another one is the classical approach we can solve it and another one is using heuristic approach. In classical optimization problem, it is an analytical method. We can apply this method using calculus, differential calculus approach and it is being limited because if, when we are using the differential calculus approach, the function should be of continuous and differentiable type but in many practical situations we may not be able to find the equations objective functions to be continuous or differentiable hence the limitation exists for the applying classical optimization problem uh, the, cla the main three types of problems cla applying classical optimization are single variable functions multivariable functions and multivariable functions with both equality and inequality constraints. We are very familiar with this. We have solved the problem in school level or college level. We have solved the problem using Lagrangian multiplier method uh, for equality constraints problem. And the uh, Kuhn-Tucker condition is being applied for solving the inequality constraints problems. Now comes the meta heuristic optimization. Heuristic Heuristic optimization means it's nothing but a thumb rule. It mimics the natural genetics or natural evolution concepts to frame the technique. It, it meta heuristic problem always starts with the um, one or more initial solution. From that initial solution, uh, using the iterative process, more solutions are being generated. From the available solution, the best solution is found and the iterative process is continued till it satisfies the termination criteria or if there is no further improvement in the solution. This is the usual process of finding solution using meta heuristic optimization. Uh, meta, the following are some of the methods uh, applied in meta heuristic optimization. One is simulated annealing. In simulated annealing, it uses the process of uh, sudden cooling of a molten mass 
of to remove its impurity now we explain the concept of supply chain management system because uh, optimization concept is being applied in supply chain supply chain is now is the uh, fast going process because most of us are in pandemic and we were not able to buy goods by going outside we may rely completely on the online marketing or online purchasing but supply chain is the best uh, on process going on process technique now uh, supply chain supply chain is a network which connects individuals organizations resources activities and technology in order to create the product and delivery of the product and also the supply of raw materials in between the supplier and the manufacturer these processes are said to be the supply chain supply chain management is a process which integrates suppliers manufacturers distributors and retailers in order to produce the right quantity of the product there is a difference between supply chain and supply chain management in supply chain management we need to produce the right quantity at right time and it should be delivered to the customer at right location so that the customer satisfaction is more important by satisfying the customer this is the supply chain framework uh, here the supply chain framework has uh, supplier already we told that it is an integrating the process of supplier manufacturer distributor retailers and customers where the there is a flow of goods and information in between all these five let me explain this concept using a simple example if a customer goes and buys a detergent from a retailer that is from a stock shop then the retailer has to stock the goods by getting it from distributor it is being transported from distributor to the retailer where the distributor get the product from the manufacturer where the manufacturer manufactures the products by sub with where by using the raw materials being supplied by the supplier hence all are interconnected and this is going to be the supply chain framework now the supply chain drivers let us see the performance of supply chain and first the competitive strategy first comes the customer satisfaction what is the need of the customer we need to find after that it is being transformed to supply chain strategy that means what are the products they have to produce and what are the raw materials they require what is the manufacturing process and what is the time to produce that product everything comes under supply chain all these three are interconnected uh, because inventory plays a vital role in these three logistical drivers the objective of the supply chain is to maximize the overall value generated by the supply chain where the value is defined as the difference between the worth of the final product and also the and the cost incurred during filling the customer's request why supply chain management is needed supply chain management is needed to reduce the cost to handle the demand supply scenario in an effective way for the effective market coverage and to increase the customer satisfaction and also for any organization to stay competitive in the global market now let us go into the overview of uh, inventory optimization uh, inventory is said to be an idle resource kept by any organization to meet the future demand inventory management is a policy which monitors the level of inventory to find out what level should be maintained and when the stock to be replenished and how much to be replenished this is the process of inventory management and what is the role of inventory in supply chain we have already seen inventory is the important logistical driver in the supply chain it includes the raw materials work in process and finished goods within the supply chain it is a major source of cost in the supply chain hence it has a huge impact on the responsiveness hence inventory plays a vital role for a value generation in the supply chain 
why inventory is needed to improve the customer services and to improve the economies of purchasing and to improve the economies of production and transportation saving to meet the future uh, sorry to uh, be cautious against the future and to may manage the unplanned shocks due to uh, labor strikes natural disorders etc uh, the objective of the supply chain is to uh, reduce the cost involving in by investing more on the excess, excess inventories and to ensure the smooth production by maintaining reasonable stocks and also the timely and regular supply to the customers for the entire supply uh, for the entire satisfaction of the customers the objective of the inventory optimization is to protect the firm against the variations in raw material delivery time and the adequate level of to improve the customer service and to minimize the risk due to obsolescence and deterioration the following are the costs involved in uh, the inventory it is inventory carrying cost it may be called as holding cost or storage cost it is the proportional to these costs are proportional to the quantity of material held in the stock next comes the shortage cost or stock out cost shortage cost or stock out cost comes into play when the customer satisfaction is not met that is known as shortage cost and purchase cost is the purchase price of the item ordering cost is the cost associated in uh, setting up the for manufacturing or in ordering the process of ordering the following are the components of the inventory they are demand demand already we know it is the number of units required per period and lead time is the time between placing the order and receipt of the material order cycle is the time between the placement of two successive orders back order exists when we were not able to satisfy the customer then that quantity can be ordered in the future events while ordering for future we can order that quantity that is said to be the back order quantity it is always because we may not sure whether they will customer will buy it in the next order or it may be uh, sold or it may be not be sold next is reorder level reorder level is the uh, inventory level which an organization to maintain to satisfy the customer demand now inventory policies are classified uh, is classified into continuous review policy and periodic review policy in continuous review policy the inventory level is monitored regularly and the order is being placed when the reorder when the uh, quantity reaches its reorder level and this continuous review policy is uh, is very expensive and usually it is maintained in the distributor level or in the supplier level now periodic review policy the inventory is monitored at regular intervals of time and the order is being placed at fixed interval of time they may not know whether the risk, the quantity is there or not but at fixed interval of time they may order for the new products and it is less cost compared to continuous review policy it is less cost in workers is less but it is used by the uh, small retail stores drug stores and groceries etc inventory model is classified into deterministic inventory model and stochastic inventory model it, it, this classification is made according depends on the demand perception if the demand is deterministic then it is said to be deterministic inventory model here the stock out is not allowed at all it is being further classified as static and dynamic model in static model demand is constant but in dynamic model the demand varies in stochastic inventory model demand and lead time are not known and hence we may since due to the uncertainty we may attach the probabilistic distribution to the stochastic inventory model now let us see reverse supply chain a uh, reverse supply chain or reverse logistic is the series of activities uh, which includes the upstream that is uh, i have we have seen the supply chain where the, 
the supply chain flows from the supplier to the customer but in reverse supply chain it is in the reverse order the flow is from customer to the supplier where the products the used products or the product which is not satisfy the specification or collected from the customers and it is being sent to the suppliers for remanufacturing or reuse this process is known as reverse supply chain uh, reverse supply chain the following are the characteristics of the reverse supply chain it is convergent in nature from end user to manufacturer it is the reverse flow of the products and it is considered to be relatively slow the movement is going to be relatively slow and we may not sure while going the upstream we may not sure the value may decline if time goes up the value of the product may also reduces hence there is a variation in the value of the products and a very small addition in some cases we may not sure and also the inventory we may, we may not know the level of inventory it is also uncertain inventory level is also uncertain and the following are the uh, industries organizations which are